manufacturing process of Koyo Geo Textiles. The Geo Textiles derive its name from two words, Geo and Textiles, and therefore it means the fabric in use in relation with earth. The term Geo Textiles or Geo Fabric represent woven and non-woven knitted composites and blanket materials of natural or synthetic origin used as a permeable textile fabrics in geotechnical engineering to prevent the soil from migrating while maintaining the water flow. The Geo Textiles role is to protect and promote vegetarian cover during its formative period after which it degrades over a period of time and mixes with the soil providing for valuable nutrients. Koya Geo Textiles is a net fabric from Koya Fiber. It is a woven fabric of two treadle in construction made from Koya yarn in which the warp and weft threads are positioned at a distance to get a mesh effect of quarter inch and half inch and one inch square. The netting gives the grass plenty of room to grow at the same time provides large number of check dams per square meter of soil media. The nettings are normally produced on Koya handloom out of two ply Koya yarn in 1 meter wide rolls of 50 meter length. Koya Geo textiles are used for stabilization of soil through vegetation against erosion of landscape and soil slopes as well as protection of banks of river, canal and lakes, road and railway embankment and reinforcement of mud wall of stream, buns and farm and fish ponds against erosion and other applications involving separation and filtration. With the help of a machine called sectional warping drum or Wembley, the yarn required for warp is prepared in a uniform and parallel sheet form in the required length according to the color pattern of the product to be woven. The sectional warping drum consists of a drum of about 5 yards in circumference. The surface of the drum is covered by stripes of wood parallel to its axis on which long nails are fixed so as to form parallel rows both axially and circumferentially. These nails serve as guide and help to keep each section separate. The spool stand having arrangements to hold the spools properly is kept at a distance from the warping drum. The spools are arranged on the krill stand depending on the color pattern of warp in each section. The ends of yarn from the spools on the creel stand are taken through the first least reed, one each through every dent and thereafter pass through the second least reed in convenient groups of strands as per the total number of strands in each section. These groups of yarn are then taken through a single dent in the fixed reed kept adjacent to the warping drum and is tied to a hook of the concerned section of the warping drum. The least reed can be moved or slide on rails kept parallel to the axis of the drum. This helps in keeping the yarn straight and condensed when it is worn on the warping drum and also to eliminate the entanglement of warp as it is coming from the spores. The drum is rotated manually. After necessary number of sections of warp has been worn on the warping drum, they are transferred to the chain beam. The process of transferring yarn from the warping drum to the chain beam is called beaming. In sectional warping system, the required quantity of yarn for a definite length of matting is first found on the warping drum and thereafter it is transferred on the chain beam according to the length of the warp for that particular chain beam. The yarn from the warping drum is taken through a reed placed immediately after the warping drum and is tied to the apron bar fixed on the chain beam. The chain beam is rotated in a suitable manner and the yarn from the warping drum is wound on the chain beam.
The chain beam is taken out from the chain beam stand and placed on the back side of the loom. The coir hand looms for manufacture of coir geotextiles need two heddle frames and two treadles. Usually use four heddle frames coupled up in two pairs which reduces the number of the heddles to half compared to that in two heddle frames. It would also avoid inter friction of warp threads during weaving and avoid the drudgery. The warp threads are drafted through the heddles in the order 1, 2 into two heddle frames. The warp threads are drafted in the order 1, 3, 2, 4 in heddle frames in 4 heddle frames and treadling order is 1, 2. The first and second heddle frames are tied to the first treadle and third and fourth heddle to the second treadle. From the heddle frames the warp threads passes through the dent of the reed, one warp thread in a dent. At the cell wedges, two warp threads are taken in a dent. All the ends of warp threads are tied to the apron rod under uniform tension. It is then connected to a tension beam by means of pieces of rope. Waste beam is a support for woven fabric and guides the fabric to the tension beam. Tension beam is used for maintaining the tension of the tight warp. The weft is made into uli or quill form with the help of a flyer and stand. It is then placed in boat shaped device so as to pass the weft through the shed formed. When the first treadle is depressed, all the warp threads drafted through the first and second heddle frames raised up and warp threads drafted through the third and fourth heddle frames lowered. A weft is passed from left to right through the shed formed by two layers of warp threads. When the second treadle is depressed by which the warp threads drafted through the third and fourth heddle frames are raised up and the warp threads drafted through the first and second heddle frames lowered. Thereafter the second weft is passed through the shed. The odd numbered warp threads are lifted up and even numbered warp threads brought down for insertion of the first weft. Then the order of the lifting is reversed and the second weft is inserted. The process is repeated which gives the coir geotextiles. The woven fabric wound over the cloth beam which is placed below the front rest or waist beam. Anugraha loom developed by Central Coir Research Institute is the best machine for producing coir geotextiles. It is a metallic loom. Anugraha loom is helpful for women to operate easily and generate more income.
Khoya Geo Textiles for Soil Erosion Control. Amazing as it sounds, it's the 15 centimeter thick topsoil that actually supports life on planet Earth. But unfortunately, it's the same surface soil that is subjected to all kinds of natural vagaries and man-made disturbances. Water and wind are the main agents of soil erosion, involving a process of both particle detachment and its transportation. Erosion is initiated by drag impact or tractive forces acting on individual particles of the soil at the surface. However, the worst form of erosion prevalent in agricultural lands is sheet erosion. Rapidly flowing water creates rills over slopes or embankments and heavy recurring water flow through rills develops gullies. Excessive and uncontrolled grazing, unscientific farming practices, construction and mining contribute to soil erosion. The soil degradation figures in India are truly alarming. Nearly 53% of land area in India is subject to various types of land degradation. Traditionally, soil erosion has been controlled by employing various methods. Contour buns, check dams, stone pitching, etc. on slopes. However, these methods have serious limitations. They are labor-intensive, failure-prone, expensive and environmentally unfriendly. Besides, they reduce the area available for cultivation. But there's hope in sight. Studies carried out by soil bioengineering scientists and environment experts reveal that soil erosion caused mainly by water and wind can effectively be controlled by establishing a permanent vegetative cover on slopes. Several materials, both synthetic and natural, have been tested and found to be effective. These materials are commonly known as geotextiles. Synthetic materials normally remain unchanged for decades, leaving other natural calamities in their wake. And here comes the importance of natural fibers like jute, cotton, sisal, coir, and even paper materials that are increasingly gaining ground as the eco-friendly alternatives globally. When it comes to natural geotextiles, coir derived from coconut is the first choice. Because when compared to other lignocellulose natural fibers, it possesses the added advantage of higher tensile strength and durability. Its physical and chemical properties have been found ideal for soil bioengineering applications as it can support thick vegetative cover. Coir is more durable than cotton and jute.